So let's talk a little bit about Luke chapter 15. Um, let's see if I can work this thing. All right, and that is really small. Don't know if y'all can see that, but I'm going to read it to you. And then we're going to kind of break it down. And um, I always love participation as long as it's positive participation. Don't yell at me and point your finger at me, but um, we'd love to, to hear you. So let me read it to you. Uh, welcome to Turn Your Bibles there. It's Luke chapter 16, verse 1 through 15. I'll give you a sec if you're looking. Not hearing many pages turning. Uh, I'll just start the reading. Uh, so Jesus told his disciples, <clears throat> There was a rich man whose manager was accused of wasting his possessions. So he called him in and asked him, What is this I hear about you? Give an account of your management, because you cannot be manager any longer. The manager said to himself, What shall I do now? My master is taking away my job. I'm not strong enough to dig. I'm too ashamed to beg. I know what I'll do. I know what I'll do so that when I lose my job here, people will welcome me into their houses. So he called in each one of the master's debtors. He asked the first, How much do you owe my master? <clears throat> 900 gallons of olive oil, he replied. The manager told him, Take your bill, sit down quickly, and make it 450. So he cut it in half. Then he asked the second, <clears throat> And how much do you owe? A thousand bushels of wheat, he replied. He told him, Take your bill and make it 800. The master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the people of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own kind <clears throat> than are the people of the light. I tell you, use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourselves so that when it is gone, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. <clears throat> whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So if you have not been in trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? And if you have not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God, you cannot serve God, sorry, you cannot serve both God and money. The Pharisees who loved money heard all of this and were sneering at Jesus. He said to them, you are the ones who justify yourselves in the eyes of others, but God knows your hearts. What people value highly is detestable in God's sight. So we've all heard that parable before, uh, and we've all maybe brushed over that parable because it comes right after um, a super famous parable in the prodigal son. There's a lot to be taught and learned in that parable, <clears throat> and a lot to, to pull out of that parable. One of the things that I always find interesting, particularly in Jesus' parables, um, lots of places in the Bible, but particularly the parables, is just the relevance to today's world. So this is something that he, a story he told 2,000 years ago in that reign, something like that. <clears throat> and most of us in here either go to work outside the home or have gone to work outside the home uh, throughout our career. And 2,000 years later, we still find the exact same things going on in the workplace that was going on in the workplace back then, right? That, God was tell or that Jesus was telling about. Dishonest employees, folks looking for kickbacks, um, price fixing, laziness, stealing, you name it. These are things that were going on back then that he was telling a story about and using to teach his disciples and the Pharisees we're going to talk about in a minute. <clears throat> and yet we still see those things going on today. Truly, there is nothing new under the sun, as they say. I also think it's important to think about the audience here. Now, it doesn't say, um, and we don't know for sure, but this may have just been a continuation of the teaching um, from when he spoke the last parables in, in Luke 15. Again, it doesn't say that specifically. Uh, but the audience that we see here for sure is Jesus was speaking to his disciples. In, J in Luke chapter 16, verse 1, um, it says he told his disciples uh, out, of, out of the text there. Um, additionally, there's evidence uh, that he is also speaking to a broader audience, Allah, including the Pharisees. Um, and potentially others. In Luke 16, 14, the Pharisees who loved money 
heard all of this and were sneering at Jesus. Um, and then the New King James Version didn't necessarily say it, translate it quite right or quite that way in the NIV. Um, <clears throat> in Luke 16, 1, uh, he also said to his disciples, thus maybe even more so tying it back to a continuation of the teaching that he was in in Luke 15, uh, linking those stories together. Um, Luke 15 is, uh, like we talked about, uh, I'm sorry, in Luke 15, he does question the Pharisees' motives, um, and that comes into play in, here in 16 as well, based on uh, their love of money, and that being what motivated them, uh, because he talks about in 16, 15, 14 or 15, that the, they are lovers of money. Uh, so just trying to set the stage a little bit about who the audience is, um, and who would be listening, and what their, um, their win, I guess, or their teaching would be. Uh, because I do think it's different teachings, right? So the teaching that he's trying to give to the, <clears throat> the Christians, uh, the disciples, is a bit different than what he's trying to give to the, the Pharisees. And I also think he talks about two important lessons. We're going to break this down here in a second. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the first one is that the wise, the wise use of opportunities. So he's not necessarily, he's not... Um, praising him or uh, for doing dishonest things. But what he's praising him for, I think, is, hey, look, you had an opportunity to better yourself, to better your life going forward, <clears throat> and you took advantage of it. Um, the wisest move in the situation for this individual, again, poor motives and um, not, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, not ethical, um, <clears throat> what he did, uh, but... The best move that he could have made, because he was too, too weak to dig and he was too ashamed to beg, to further his life was to, uh, to take this action, to, to gain favor from his friends out in the world, right? To cut their, to cut their debt so that they would take care of him in, in, uh, once he was uh, fired from the job. <clears throat> and so when the crisis came about, he took action, again, unethical action, but action that actually helped him out, furthered his life. Um, and so the question there is, <clears throat> how do you respond when crisis comes about? Do we act shrewdly and make moves to improve the situation? Uh, or do we sit idly, idly by as the world passes by? Um, and then he also talks about sons of this world are, are more shrewd, particularly in the dealings of this world, uh, than sons of the light, a la we as Christians, we as disciples, how shrewdly are we dealing um, in, and how, how much are we taking opportunities, advantage of the opportunities that are laid in front of us to further his kingdom? Um, so I, I really want to kind of focus in on that tonight of how do we take the idea of we've got an opportunity in front of us, what are we doing with that opportunity? How are we leveraging that opportunity? Um, similarly, the um, <clears throat> unjust uh, manager had that opportunity, again, unethical, but took advantage of the opportunity that was in front of him. Um, and then another thought is, again, kind of musing here. If we made decisions like a businessman might make decisions in his business in regards to how we further the, word, the, the, the kingdom, uh, God's kingdom, would we be making different decisions on what we do and how we do and when we do? <clears throat> he also talks about the danger of covetousness. Um, if you're trusted in a little, you can be trusted in much. Uh, true riches, a la <clears throat> that what we gain in heaven. Um, if we can't be trusted in here, why would we give uh, treasures in heaven as well? <clears throat> um, are we poor stewards? Um, st stewardship is really taking care of property, um, money, property, things for someone else. Don't really own them. Uh, so this manager didn't own them. He was just entrusted <clears throat> by the... Um, by the owner to take care of it and to, to solve problems for him and to do that in a bit of a, a bit of a vacuum, right? So it didn't seem to me, based on reading it, <clears throat> that the, um, the owner was a, a super in-the-business kind of guy, if you would. He wasn't looking over this manager's shoulder. He was giving him some rope, uh, if you would. And um, the saying goes, you give them enough rope until they you know, want to hang themselves kind of thing. So Net net, that's where he got, was he got too much rope, he got too off his skis or off his rocker, and um, got fired thereof. And then you can't serve two masters. Um, and so we've, we've hit on that many, many times, but uh, of interest, you can't serve two masters. 
So what did the, um, breaking it down now, so what did the shrewd manager see in, him, see in this, this piece? And he's going to see several things. He's going to see himself. He's going to see uh, the manager. He's going to see his friends. He's going to see his possessions. So we're going to kind of break down each of those, um, and we'll go from there. Um, <clears throat> the, shrewd, the steward uh, saw himself. So let me tell you more what, where I'm headed with that. Um, sometimes when we look at ourselves in the mirror, talking to us men only because you women don't do that, man, I've gained weight. Man, you look at those gray hairs. Where did those wrinkles come from, right? And then sometimes we look at how we reacted to a particular situation. And Man, I did that. I said that. It's very interesting from time to time to step back and see ourselves, whether it's in the mirror or our, how we act and react, uh, from an from a exterior, external point of view. <clears throat> uh, poet said, nothing indeed is so likely to shock us at first as the manifest revelation of ourselves. I love what we were talking about. Peter. Peter was sure he would never deny Jesus, right? Yet where did Peter find himself? Three times as the, as the rooster crowed. <clears throat> what about when you receive photos from the, the latest photo, photography session? Those untouched or unretouched photos, Ugh, right? Hey, photographer, you need to do some work on these before they come back kind of thing, right? that's what he saw of himself. When uh, the manager came back to give an accounting, he saw himself and said, I'm not, I'm not liking what I'm seeing. I got I to gotta make some changes. See, because he owned nothing. He was a steward. He was just managing this property for this, this man. He was paid by this man <clears throat> to manage that, that property. And if he did it poorly, um, not faithfully like he was supposed to, then he was no longer going to be paid. He was no longer going to have a job. Like we talked about earlier, he wasn't strong enough to dig. He was too ashamed to, to beg. And so lots of problems were going to come by him not uh, acting faithfully in the, the stewardship that he had. Um, we here as Christians are merely stewards of God's wealth. Interesting to take that perspective because, uh, you know, we as our culture specifically likes to talk about all the things that we have and all the things that we've gained and um, what we do with, with our possessions. Uh, possessions is a big thing in today's world. <clears throat> and we really boil it down. This is all God's and he's entrusted us to do with it as we will. And we can either do with it faithfully and uh, shrewdly and progress his kingdom or we can do similar to this manager and squander that opportunity. He saw that he was squandering that opportunity and he took advantage of it um, to, to further, the king, to further his, his life, us the kingdom. Um, 1 Corinthians 4.2 uh, required in, in stewards that a man be found faithful. <clears throat> and then 1 Timothy chapter 16 and through 18. Um, let me just read that one to you. Command those who are rich in the present world not to be arrogant nor to put their hope in wealth which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to, to be good, sorry, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasures for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age, so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. I promise the next ones aren't as long, but he saw, saw himself in the stewardship as well, um, in the stewardship of time. Uh, so we have several things that we are stewards of, um, and a lot of times we just think about stewards of money, you know, how much money are we giving uh, percentage-wise uh, on Sunday mornings and when the plate passes. <clears throat> but I think that we got to think of that a little broader. Um, so for example, in Ephesians 5, 15, and 17, be, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, not, do not be foolish, but understand that the Lord's will is. 
<clears throat> We've got opportunity to take uh, advantage of the time that we have in a day, given 24 hours a day. What are we doing with that day? Are we uh, spending time in prayer with God? Are we spending time uh, further in His kingdom? Um, or are we headed down the path of furthering our stuff, um, our p worldly possessions? Um, you know, the old cliche, if the doctor told you you had six months to live, would things change? Likely, most of us would say, if we were honest with ourselves, probably, right? If we had six months to live, I think there'd be some changes that would change in my life. And I think that generally we would say the same uh, as well. Secondarily, and we're going to harp on this one, Cleo, you're, you're going to appreciate me here. In 1 Peter 4.10, <clears throat> each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. As faithful stewards of God's grace, it is in its various forms. Every one of us in here has been given gifts, um, both spiritual and natural gifts. Uh, again, like I talked about, Cleo think, tends to think that mine is to teach this class. I tend to dis disagree with him. However, shameless Bible class teaching plug here, many of you have the skill set to teach Bible classes, kids, adults, whatnot. Many of you have the uh, ability and the skills and the gifts to volunteer at um, VBS, at uh, all these other things. There are so many opportunities for us to get involved here at Woodland Oaks Church of Christ. Our elders have blessed us with uh, fantastic opportunities, and yet um, we struggle as the volunteer finders to find you guys. Now, maybe that's, um, we're not asking the right person, uh, but I would encourage you to take advantage of this opportunity and go find a Cleo, a me, a Matt Fitzgerald, a Jen Tolbert, uh, Ashley Blake, I think was mentioned earlier. Um, we need your help. We want your help. Um, get after it. Let's, let's get to going. So um, we would love for you to, uh, to volunteer. And we're using those gifts that, the God, that God has given us to further his kingdom. <clears throat> um, the gospel is another thing that we're entrusted with. <clears throat> Chapter, uh, Thess 1 Thessalonians 2.4. On the contrary, we speak as though approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. We are not trying to please people, but God who tests our hearts. And he goes on to say in 2 Timothy 1, 13 through 14, um, actually, I'm sorry, two, 2 Timothy 2, 2, <clears throat> and the things you have heard me say in the presence of my many witnesses, entrust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. The Lord has given us the opportunity, entrusted us with the gospel to take it out to others. <clears throat> I know that's hard. Um, I struggle with that. I know you guys struggle with that. Um, Tyrone teaches a class on Wednesday nights, I believe, um, helping folks to, to be more comfortable in taking that, uh, taking that out in the world. <clears throat> Again, I would just encourage you to, to take opportunity, take advantage of the opportunities laid in front of you, um, the classes, uh, the support that you're provided here at the Woodland Oaks Church of Christ, uh, to take that uh, gospel out into the world and to further his kingdom that way. Um, so back to our businessman comparison that we talked about earlier uh, we need to be ready uh, for the opportunities that are laid in front of us like the shrewd manager was so for example um, when the president announced diplomatic recognition of mainland China the American business community immediately negotiated to establish offices in China the door opened and they ran through it. Many a door is opened uh, to further the kingdom <clears throat> through Woodland Oaks, through mission work, through lots of other things, uh, church camps, etc. Uh, are we taking the opportunity to run through that door or are we um, sticking with what we know and where we've been and um, letting those opportunities pass us by? So the key idea, idea to drive home here is that um, stewardship just isn't just about what we put in the plate. It's about our time, the gifts that we're given, um, the opportunities that are laid in front of us and what we're doing with those opportunities and how we can further those, um, the kingdom through those opportunities. <clears throat> we saw life. In contrast to Luke chapter 15, uh, specifically looking at the, um, the parable of the prodigal son, I really feel like there was uh, two people to look at in that story. There was the prodigal son uh, who had gone away and he squandered all his wealth. He was um, 
wine and women and um, whatnot, and he found himself in the lowest of low places and came back home, right? But he squandered the opportunities that were laid in front of him that were given him. In contrast or contrarily, the older brother, really what we're going to say, he was treading water, right? So he was doing the things that he was asked of, but he was not in content with what he was doing. He was always looking for what's ahead. Uh, how can I have fun with my friends? Why am I not getting, um, you know, to the betterment of what I'm seeing that my brother's getting? Uh, looking for unhappy in the current situation, what's to come? So those were kind of the two laid out there. And then the steward uh, didn't looked at both of those or, you know, could, could have gone both of those routes, could have said, hey, look, I'm going to squander these opportunities and I'm just going to let it be and, you know, the, see, see where it takes me. Or he could have just treaded water and, and done um, the things that he had always done. And yet he decided to do different. He took up the opportunity to invest in his future. Again, unethical. Um, but in crisis, he decided to invest his life. He lived the present in the light of the future. So what can I do today that will make my future better? He used this opportunity wisely to improve his future. Uh, Jesus didn't approve the way he did it, uh, but he commended him for the fact that he made the best of his opportunity. When the crisis came, the master asked to see the books. The steward saw life in a new light. He realized that he had been wasting his life and living a lie. He called his master, master, but it really, in reality, money was his master. And as we heard, you can't serve two masters. He was even willing to cheat to get money. I uh, thought this was a pretty cool quote, but um, money is a marvelous servant, but a terrible master. So in general, what we're what, um, trying to, to portray here is he saw life. Uh, when we're given opportunities to uh, take advantage of further in the kingdom, um, we want to take advantage of those. Uh, Jesus commended him for doing so, again, uh, unethically. Um, but he made the best of his opportunity. And we're given opportunities on a regular basis that um, sometimes we take for granted. Um, if you've discovered today that today was your last day to live, how much rearranging would you have to do? Uh, would your priorities be any different? I think they would, um, particularly when we think about uh, the accounting that is to be had. Um, when we... When we get to Judgment Day, um, the, the good works that we put in um, will matter, will matter, will matter. And they matter today as well. He also saw his master. I thought this one was pretty interesting. <clears throat> when he heard of the cheating, he called for the books, the master, and asked for an accounting. Then he fired him. But wasn't so worried that he immediately sounded the alarm and told all the business associates, um, which the ones that gave the, which gave the steward time uh, to, take the best, to make the best of his opportunity. Um, he very easily could have put him in jail or potentially worse um, for being so unfaithful in the stewardship of his, his property. See, as we talked about earlier, the master gave him the freedom to operate without direct supervision. He wasn't a micromanager. He maybe even sounded distant. He trusted him, and he didn't feel like he had to be present in his everyday life. So do we as Christians feel like our father is distant? So he's given us the opportunity to be a steward of his things, but my concern, and I'm speaking personally, and uh, maybe, it, uh, maybe it affects you guys too, is, is that sometimes I don't see him in my everyday life. He's not, you know, in my mind looking right over my shoulder. And thus, I can do things that aren't necessarily in the best um, light of what they might be if I thought he was looking over my shoulder, right? So he's entrusted us with these things, thinking that we're, knowing that, or asking us to be faithful and to do the things that he would want us to do if it were him, right? We're acting as um, an agent of him, so to speak. So I, I feel like the shrewd manager had forgotten that, hey, there is somebody behind 
um, the things that I'm doing. There is somebody that's going to have an accountability towards the things that I'm doing in the end. <clears throat> You'd forgotten that stewardship involves uh, responsibility, uh, not only responsibility and privilege, but it also involves accountability. It was great fun patting his own wallet, but then the day of reckoning arrived. See, sometimes we take for granted that God entrusts us and gives us the opportunity to operate without perceived direct supervision. And sometimes we forget that there is that accountability to be had. 2 Corinthians 5.10, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each of us may receive <clears throat> what is due for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. As Christians, our sins, as Christians, our sins will be forgiven, um, but it's the, the good works that will determine the rewards that we receive in eternity. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3.11, uh, for, one, for one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on his foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. <clears throat> it will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If that work has been built, built if what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, even though only the one escaping through the flames. And I've got uh, Hebrews 10, 17, John 5, 24, and Romans 8, 1. We won't read through those, but all in the same vein. So Jesus' application is pretty clear uh, in this application. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also, be, will also be dishonest with much. So if you've not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? Just let that one sit a minute. If you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? If you've not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? The better steward we are of the blessings he gives us, and the opportunities he gives us, and the time he gives us, more blessings we'll see in, in heaven. <clears throat> he saw possessions. He lived for things. But things are a means to an end, not the end. Before the crisis came, the steward lived for things. He stole from his master in order to enjoy life, to pad his pocket. But then he was shocked into realizing that things are not an end in themselves, rather they are a means to an end. This realization changed his life. Of itself, money is pretty useless. You can't eat it. You can't heal with it. Take a whole bunch of it to heat you or to, to provide eat but it's a medium of exchange. Simply to amass money is no guarantee of happiness. <clears throat> In fact, the Bible teaches that the desire to amass money is the cause of a great deal of unhappiness. Henry Fielding wrote, If you have money, if you make money your God, it will plague you like the devil. The world teaches us that possessions is what we should be after. And yet God, Jesus, tells us different. We need to use the possessions that we are entrusted with to serve Him. And the more that we can be trusted with, the more He'll give us, and the more uh, we will bless Him, and the more we will have... Um, in rewards on the back end. And lastly, he saw his friends. His friends. So up to the reckoning, up to the um, judgment day, uh, he used his friends to pad his wallet. He used them to, uh, for crookedness, for cheating, but then he saw them as, an them as an opportunity to further his life in the future. 
And so by uh, allowing them, uh, what's the word, I'm, I guess, uh, allowing them to, to cut their, 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 what they owed, then he was making them into friends that would take care of him in the future. Um, his motives for getting the friends was poor, um, but it reminds us that we must use our opportunities to gain friends for heaven so that when life ends, they will receive us into everlasting habitations. There's another truth here. The per a person who is unfaithful with material wealth cannot be trusted with spiritual wealth. There's a definite way a Christian lives, uses money and gifts, and the way he ministers the truths of, truths of God's word. What is, what is it that tempts people into unfaithfulness and dishonesty? Let me ask that question. I'm sorry, I've been talking a lot here. So what is it that tempts us as Christians into unfaithfulness and dishonesty? Anybody, anybody got an answer here? Stuff. stuff, that's right. Thank you, John. Uh, stuff, right. But I also think that the stuff is to impress others, typically. <laughs> uh, to impress others, right? Um, I like a guy, Dave Ramsey, some of you guys know him, but um, he talks about how hard we work to amass all these things to impress people that we really don't even like, right? And so the thing that, that honestly and, uh, um, drives us to the unfaithfulness and the dishonesty is generally trying to impress others because, um, I don't know, it's just not somewhere that... Um, it's, 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 it's what the world tells us to do. It's what we feel in our hearts. Um, and yet, it gets us, you know, nowhere, so to speak. Um, we're, the one we're trying to impress is, is God, the Father. And we spend so much of our time trying to impress others who, as Dave Ramsey says, we don't even like. I'm going to be finishing a little early here. Um, hope that's okay. You can talk amongst yourselves. But have you met yourself in this parable? So taking the time to study this parable myself, I saw myself in several of these areas, right? Um, have you gained a new outlook? Could you gain a new outlook on your friends if you were to take a look at yourself retrospectively? Are those friends... Friends that are helping you uh, further the kingdom or are those friends that you're trying to impress with your stuff? Verse 9, are we using our opportunities to make friends for heaven? The Lord lays opportunities in front of us on a daily basis. Are we taking advantage of those opportunities? Are we leveraging those opportunities uh, to further that kingdom? He who is faithful and little can be trusted with much. You may be sitting here today with very little. You may be sitting here today with very much. But whatever you have, if you can be trusted with that, the more you'll be given, the more you can be trusted. And Luke 15, 16, 15, people desire the praises of man over the approval of God. So as John uh, very keenly pointed out stuff, all right, and to a uh, uh, for people to approve of us, is what tempts us into unfaithfulness and dishonesty. The reason that the shrewd uh, manager was patting his pocket was to impress other people. That which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. I did have it. So in closing this evening, um, what I'd like to say is, is that uh, we are truly stewards here um, in this, finding ourselves likely in a very similar situation to that of the uh, shrewd manager. Um, we've got time and money and gifts um, that, we can, that we can use and leverage for God that maybe we aren't. Uh, maybe when we look at ourselves uh, in the mirror, when we think back about some of the opportunities that have been laid in front of us that we didn't quite use those opportunities or leverage those opportunities that we would have liked. Uh, I'd encourage you to, to, 
to think through that, to take some retrospect in your, on, your, uh, on your life these days, and to get involved. Uh, you know, as a, as a deacon of this church, um, that's something that we, we sure want from you, and um, not only does it help us today, but it'll help you um, in the life to come. So let's pray, and uh, we'll be dismissed uh, early this, a little bit early this evening.